Welcome to At Your Library. I am your host, Kathleen Clifford. Today we will be interviewing Jim Gallagher. As we are currently in sub-century celebration here in Groton, Connecticut, he will be talking about the John P. Holland program. Welcome, Jim. Thank you very much. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm not a historian. Uh, I'm a retired oceanographer from the uh, Sound Lab, and, uh, but I belong to the Ancient Order of Hibernians in New London County, an Irish-American organization. And um, because we're in the submarine capital of the world, and because Holland, John Holland, was uh, born in Ireland, uh, we had an interest in Holland and the submarines, and we named our organization the John P. Holland Division of the Ancient Order of Hibernians. And it was that vehicle then that we pursued more of the history uh, of Holland, his life and career. Now, what is the order, the Amer what is the ancient order of Hiberians? It's an Irish-American organization, was formed in 1836 in the United States, and uh, had a, a division that formed in 1871 in New London, uh, went defunct in the Second World War, and we reestablished in 1963. And the purpose of the organization is to pursue uh, and preserve Irish culture, uh, Irish history, and uh, uh, also, at, when it first formed in the 1800s, it was more to uh, provide employment for Irish immigrants coming over here in the mid-19th century. So when they came over, they had sort of a safety net, a place to go where they could have um, familiar cultural events and um, help yes. accumulating to the U.S. Yes. Um, so what got you interested in researching John Holland specifically? Well, one, the fact that he was born in Ireland, and, and secondly, uh, was directly associated with the Navy by the fact the Navy purchased his, his submarine. The first submarine for the U.S. Navy was purchased uh, from Holland's uh, boat. At any rate, also, this was a time in the late 1800s with Holland confronting or meeting with high levels of government and corporations and being an entrepreneur, it was also a time when the uh, no Irish need apply signs were everywhere and was prevalent. And so to see that he, he was successful over time in that kind of an atmosphere said something about the man, we thought. And that uh, generated even more interest in looking into his background. Excellent. Now, my research says that John Holland was a teacher for most of his life. So how did he make the transition into um, designing submarines? Well, while he was still in Ireland um, in 1862, by the way, he was born in February 1841 in Ireland. In 1862, he became enamored with the use of ironclad boats in the U.S. Civil War. And to him, iron boats were the future. Um, I don't get the impression that he did much in the way of designing submarines, per se, in Ireland. But he emigrated uh, from Ireland to America in 1873, and um, uh, he landed in Boston. And while he was in Boston, he slipped on the ice, broke a leg, and spent his whole rehab period studying underwater boats. And uh, then when he moved to New Jersey, where he became a teacher, he was a teacher by day and a designer and invent inventor by night, often using his school blackboard. Um, but he had this interest in uh, submarine boats at the time. Um, and in 1875, just a couple of years after he came to America, he submitted a proposal to the Navy uh, for a submarine, and they rejected it, saying it was impractical. Um, but his... Uh, his brother was involved in some Irish organization called the Fenians, and uh, he introduced Holland to the leaders of the Fenians who were interested in um, liberation of Ireland from the English domination. And uh, they saw Holland's boat as an opportunity to embarrass the British Navy. <laughs> so <laughs> they agreed to fund Holland's boat where the Navy didn't. And, um, uh, and so we start from there with, with the Irish connection here. Okay, Inter that is really interesting. 
Um, so your program will be here August 11th at the library, and you're going to go into even greater depth on the contributions of John P. Holland into the submarines. Yes. However, why or how did John Holland get involved with inventing submarines? Just his interests, his background? Well, he, um, when he was a young man in Ireland, he enrolled in the Irish Christian Brothers to become a teacher. And, but he always, apparently always had an interest in physics and math. And in that Irish Christian Brothers program, he was uh, encouraged to continue to study in that field and to teach in that field. Uh, I don't know exactly how he went from physics and math to submarine, but uh, as I said, I think the influence of the ironclad boats during the U.S. Civil War and uh, it was, was pr probably one of the uh, catalysts. How did the, your division of the Hiberians uh, become associated with the history of John P. Holland? Well, there were some of the fellows in our division who uh, were ex-mariners, submariners, and uh, they were familiar with John Holland being the father of the modern submarine. And um, we thought it would be uh, appropriate for us to name our division the John P. Holland Division. But in doing so, we had to find out more about Holland. <clears throat> and so we started a subcommittee to research Holland's life and career. And in that process, we found that uh, the biographer of John Holland, this Dr. Richard Morris, uh, in the area, met with him. And then we used to meet repeatedly in his house and uh, go over Holland's history. Um, and, you know, that's, I'd say that that was the catalyst for us learning more about, uh, about Holland. And that's a really great find, to find that he was a local biographer working specifically on what you were interested in. Yes, well, he was a, a professor up at Trinity College in Hartford, and his grandfather was the superintendent engineer for John Holland. And uh, as such, he had a lot of his grandfather's memorabilia. Uh, so he was able to use that to research not only his grandfather, but Holland, and the whole development of the uh, submarines at, at that time. This, um, his first book was uh, printed in 1966 and uh, reprinted 1980 and again in 1986, or excuse me, eight, 1996. Um, and it still remains the definitive biography of Holland. Excellent. So we are here interviewing Jim Gallagher, Gallagher on the history of the John P. Holland. We will be back in the second half to talk more about the submarine and John P. Holland's role in it. I see my friends out there getting waves. It's like, it's hard. It was a surprise to me when they told me I had MS. It's like, you sure? Well, this is a virtual reality rig, and this is gonna allow uh, Steve to see and experience the waves that I ride. Put that on your head. Whoa. You're going to need me. You're going to need us, all of us. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food, you're going to need our determination, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Welcome back to At Your Library. I am your host, Kathleen Clifford. Today, Jim Gallagher is joining us to talk about his research with the John P. Holland. Welcome back to the show. Thank you again. So how important is the invention of the submarine? Well, 
I can say that Holland's uh, philosophy in developing the submarine was that he recognized that that uh, vehicle was so formidable that it would be a deterrent to war. He did not foresee it being the strength, the strong element that it is in warfare. Um, but certainly, when look back over the evolution of the submarine now, and even during the Cold War period, to see that we had submarines out there um, that really, in our view, prevented you know, the Russians from uh, taking any aggressive action. Uh, so, in effect, it was a deterrent to, to war, or at least contributed to it. So, you spoke earlier how the U.S. Navy did not initially embrace John Holland's design, and he was funded by another organization. So, what was John's relationship with the U.S. Navy? Well, it was cordial uh, through the years. Uh, he won a couple of bids uh, in, the, in the dark period of the 1880s through the 1890s uh, that turned out to be, um, uh, that were not implemented for different reasons, some political and some whatever. But so he had a relationship with the Navy. And with the Holland Six boat, he had um, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, and who I think was Secretary of the Navy at the time, or Under Secretary, and uh, uh, Admiral Dewey uh, check out the Holland Six boat during test trials. And they were all very much in favor of the Navy uh, purchasing Holland's boat. So, uh, and, and the fact that his Holland Six boat became the SS-1, the first Navy submarine. And, and that, was in eight, that was in 1900. And in that same year, later that year, there were some modifications made through Navy funding of the Holland Six to form what they call the A-class boat. And, and in building several of those boats, which became the first uh, submarine fleet for the US Navy. So there was a direct tie-in between Holland and the Navy. Excellent. When you do your presentation on August 11th, will you have photos as part of your program so we can see some of John's early work? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so what is your favorite aspects or the most interesting thing you've discovered about John Holland during your research? Well, I think he must have had some great intestinal fortitude um, or some people would say he was a thick Irishman, one or the other, uh, to be able to sustain his development during all the obstacles he ran into, political obstacles, funding obstacles, and so forth. Uh, I might even say that during the period that um, he was funded by the Fenians, the early stage when he built his first three boats, the British government was spying on him during that whole period. Uh, and uh, so I, I just think that uh, the fact that he persevered and had the intelligence to do something really worthwhile uh, made it noteworthy for us to, uh, to recognize him. Excellent. Now, being here in Groton, that we are a very large submarine community, where would you direct somebody that wanted to learn more about John Holland? First, I would, I would recommend uh, Dick Morris's book called John Holland Biography. Um, secondly, uh, memorabilia of Holland uh, exists uh, in the, and is available in the Patterson, New Jersey Museum and the Subbase Museum. And also, uh, there's a fellow named Gary McHugh who's done a lot of work with us and beyond what we've done in, in the Hibernians, um, who has either a website or certainly a, a, an email address that if people were interested in following what uh, uh, McHugh has learned and, and the information that he has, uh, Gary said he'd be willing to talk to people. How much of John Holland's early concepts can be found in the modern submarine today? Well, interesting. Following World War II, the Navy conducted extensive research to optimize the hull design to achieve high speeds underwater with minimal drag resistance. The results of that research mirrored the hull uh, design of the Holland II boat and Holland Six boat. And the resulting design produced the experimental diesel submarine, the Albacore, and in 1958, the nuclear-powered Skipjack class. So that brings us right up to today. So right. his work can be found right from the beginning till now. Uh, so you'll be here on August 11th to speak at 7 o'clock. So please join us 
to hear Jim Gallagher speak on John T. Holland in part of our sub-century programming for the summer. This has been At Your Library. Thank you for joining us.